right now. And we start with a look outside with TransGuide, a crash on the northwest side creating a backup right now. This is a shot from TransGuide at I-10 and Crossroads. TransGuide tells us all this is a result of an 18-wheeler that went over the median into the westbound lanes right before the Loop 410 exit. As you can see, a couple of lanes are shut down, but traffic is still able to get through. TransGuide says there were no major injuries and the 18-wheeler was the only vehicle involved. The closure is expected to be in place for some time. Three San Antonio police officers indicted by a Bear County grand jury for the shooting death of a woman this summer are expected to make their initial court appearance on those charges January 29th. The 46 year old Melissa Perez died in late June at her Southwest Side apartment. Police officials said she was suffering a mental health crisis when officers shot her multiple times. This is a story that continues to develop. Officer Eliasar Alejandro, Sergeant Alfred Flores, and Officer Nathaniel Villalobos were indicted by a Bear County grand jury yesterday. Alejandro and Flores are facing a charge of murder, and Villalobos is facing a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon by a public servant. All three officers responded to a call at Perez's Southwest Side apartment June 23rd. Perez had a hammer in her hand when police shot her through a patio window and door. SAPD Police Chief William McManus said the officers didn't follow department policy or training and, quote, used deadly force, which was not reasonable given all the circumstances, end quote. Dan Packard, the attorney for Melissa Perez's family, says police could have handled things differently. They had a loaded shotgun with beanbags available. He also said that there were other officers on scene who didn't try to stop things from escalating, proving they don't have enough mental health training. Why didn't the supervisor say, hey, stand down? What are we doing here? She's not going to hurt anybody. No one is above the law. Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez agrees the overriding theme in this case is more education about mental illness. The three officers are suspended from SAPD without pay. If convicted, the officers potentially face decades in prison. New details this noon. Police now say there was an argument before a shooting on the city's northeast side. Officers tell us just after nine last night, two men were arguing when a third man told them to stop yelling. That's when one of the suspects shot that person. They were taken to the hospital with life threatening injuries. Meanwhile, police say the suspect took off in a dark colored car. Firefighters say it looks like people had a hand in a fire that broke out inside a vacant building. They believe someone started it overnight, sending smoke into the area near South Presa and Steve's Avenue. As Katrina Weber shows, the challenges for crews included more than just flames. It took very little time for these firefighters to knock down flames inside an abandoned building. The smoke, though, was another question. They had to look high and low, climbing a ladder to the roof to find the source of it. It was heavily charged with smoke, but very little contents. So it looks like it had been burning for a while. The first fire crews arrived in the 3600 block of South Presa just before 5 this morning. Then others came soon after. That included one team with a saw to help them cut through metal bars in their way. Even though firefighters had a struggle getting through those burglar bars, it seems someone else was able to do it before them, whoever started the fire. It's like people have been living there in the back half of the structure for some time. We found a lot of mattresses, makeshift kitchen in there. They had some burning equipment to cooking on top of cooking stones and that kind of stuff. So somebody had been living in there. What they didn't find was anyone still inside the building. The fire starter already had left. Firefighters all were able to walk away unhurt, but also a bit unhappy. These are a little bit more frustrating on our end, sending our firefighters in there to, some, to the unknown, really. They say vacant buildings hold unknown dangers, and the ongoing problem in the city with fires in them creates unnecessary risk for those on the fire lines and anyone else nearby. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Taking another look at TransGuide. Again, we're at I-10 at Crossroads, that accident that has two of the lanes shut down. Traffic 
moving through there, but at a slow pace. And it is Friday, so the roads are going to be busy, and it was a wacky morning, Mia. It was very damp out there, yet we had some patchy fog, some of which was very dense in spots. And along with that, we had drizzle and even mist out there. The good news is the fog is starting to lift. You can see visibility numbers here in and around the San Antonio area a lot better than what we were dealing with just a little bit while ago, and especially earlier this morning. Now, we are monitoring still the potential to find some showers move through parts of San Antonio a little bit later on this afternoon. Right now, the bulk of that light rain activity is still off to our west, moving through far eastern Uvalde County. That's all moving into western Medina County. As we speak, Sabinal cashing in on some of that activity as it moves over the Highway 90 corridor. That is going to continue working farther off to the east over the next several hours. We're going to call it about a 40 percent potential by mid to late afternoon, especially here in the Alamo City to see a few light showers work their way through the cloud cover still in place, holding temperatures to the mid 60s for us here in town around 60 by 7 p.m. And then later on tonight, while I do think a few showers will be possible around the dinner time frame, those showers do look to work their way out of the area later as we see a front move through and clearing takes back over. Speaking of which, that is going to set us up for a fantastic weekend. Low humidity moves in by tomorrow morning. That's going to make for some chilly mornings, followed by very nice afternoons and plenty of sunshine. That quiet weather pattern does look to continue even into the start of next week. So we're going to talk all about it and really break down that weekend forecast coming up a little bit later on, guys that. Thanks, Mia. Now, it will be a busy weekend in downtown San Antonio. There are several big events taking place for the holidays. There are. RJ Marquez breaks down what you need to know about parking and traffic in the downtown area. All right, it is going to be a jam-packed weekend across the downtown area here. So we're going to let you know some information on some events taking place. First thing, holidays on Houston. That's going to be taking place around Legacy Park. And, of course, Houston, a lot of activations in that area. USAA and Valero are both holding their corporate parties this weekend there in the downtown area. Magical Cirque is also going to be taking place here and the Nutcracker at the Lila Cockrell Theater. Magical Cirque Christmas, that one's going to be at the Majestic. So the city is advising right now that... Uh, of you use two parking garages. Now there's going to be a lot of parking garages, obviously city owned, but these are the best two when it comes to availability. The St. Mary's garage there on East Travis Street and also the city tower garage that's going to be on West Commerce Street. So all of these are walking distance to the Riverwalk if you're not going to be there for any of these holiday events. And uh, we also have walking distance to the Majestic Theater, a lot of different parts of the city that you can get access to from these two parking garages. Let's take a look at some drone video that we shot the other other day and to kind of give you a nice uh, look here at some of these uh, parking garages that we're talking about. The St. Mary's Garage, again, this is going to be the closest location to the Majestic uh, and also Travis Park. So if you're going to go check out the tree, this is an option for you right there. So we have, uh, of course, a lot of uh, availability in that parking garage there. And then we're going to show you another one here. This, of course, is the Convention Center Garage. Now, this is going to be very busy. Again, Valero, they're going to have their event at the Grand Hyatt, USAA at the Convention Center center. There's also the Pokemon Regional Championships at the Convention Center that day as well. The Lila Cockrell Theater is in this area and uh, they of course are showing the Nutcracker in the evening. So the South Alamo lot may be a good option there if you are headed out to this part of downtown San Antonio near the Convention Center and the Alamo Dome. So visitors of course are being asked to consider using public transportation, ride share, also maybe if you're parking just kind of expect to maybe get a little bit of walk there as we give you back outside here one more quick look at our map and you can see again we have these two parking garages that are going to have the most availability there's going to be a lot of things going on throughout downtown san antonio on saturday we have a full map of all these city-owned garages on ksat.com make sure to check that out if you're headed downtown and be safe everyone this weekend Volunteers are busy today getting gifts to those in need. Today is the third day of distribution for the Salvation Army's Project Angel Tree. At least 70 volunteers are at work right now. The organization says close to 6,000 people are getting a boost this holiday season thanks to the program that includes seniors and children. We also try to make sure that all the kids get clothing as well. Um, but the fun thing is, like, the kids don't want to open clothes on Christmas. They want to open the toys. So every kid has something in there that's going to be really fun to open on Christmas. 
Today is the last day for families to pick up their gifts. And the San Antonio Spurs are on a streak. Unfortunately, it's a record setting losing streak. However, they did give the Lakers a run for their money during their most recent meeting this week. Can San Antonio get the win in tonight's rematch? A preview ahead in sports. The Federal Reserve is changing its tactics, and that includes lowering interest rates next year. Now we're getting an idea of when you could see that happen. Details after the break. It's situated on a hill uh, overlooking the uh, downtown center of the city. One time you couldn't give away the east side. Man, it's like, I can't wait till I get my hands on it, you know. Do I want to walk outside of my house and two blocks later I'm at the best coffee shop in the city? Yes, but at what expense? What I've seen was the people change. Uh, more people with money came in. Fast food, there's, they're everywhere. But if you want to eat anything, even remotely healthy, it's not in your neighborhood at all. Just because it's been going on for a long time doesn't mean that you know it should be going on. That's where the need is. The shelter shouldn't be far away. The shelter should be accessible. I think we need to quit trying to get rid of them and start helping them. We want to be a part of Dignity as well. Uh, so I think that's what makes us really, really close. That's a bit of a sneak peek as KSAT takes its Know My Neighborhood series on the road again. This time we are heading to the historic Dignity Hill, an area that's currently faced with preserving its history and investing in the future. Steve, Myra, and the KSAT team will be live from the Carver Community Cultural Center starting at 6 o'clock Monday night. You can watch it right here on KSAT 12, KSAT.com, and on the KSAT TV app, available any way you stream. We turn now to the economy. Stocks closed at another record high Thursday, while consumer spending remains strong. As ABC's Rena Roy reports, it comes after the Federal Reserve announced plans to cut interest rates next year. A strong few days on Wall Street with stocks soaring. The Dow Jones Industrial Average closed in an all-time high Thursday for the second day in a row, adding another 158 points. It comes after the Federal Reserve announced plans to start cutting interest rates next year. Fed has signaled that the next move, whether it's in the spring or early summer or late summer, that that next move is most likely downward and not upward again. And so that's what markets are responding to. Job growth is steady and inflation is cooling, which is why the Fed now forecasts it will make three cuts in 2024, helping reverse a string of increases that has made borrowing very expensive. Earlier this year, mortgage rates reaching their highest level in more than two decades. And credit card rates hit record highs. Rate cuts would provide relief in those areas. In anticipation of the Fed's move, mortgage rates just dropped below 7% for the first time since August. Cuts will also make it cheaper to get a loan for a car or refinance one and boost company valuations, potentially helping fuel returns for stockholders. It's unclear when we would see cuts to interest rates. Some economists predict it could be as early as March. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. As we take another look outside, this is the uh, San Antonio airport. Looks like we still have a little bit of dreary weather that we're contending with uh, as we're about halfway through the day on this Friday. Yep, definitely some gray skies greeting you if you're stepping out for any lunchtime plans or even to pick up the kiddos from school. A lot of kids starting to get out for holiday break, getting off early this Friday. The clouds sticking with us today, but this weekend looks fantastic. We'll get to that weekend forecast in a bit. The aquifer level for today up almost half of a foot, 638.3 the reading this Friday. Also good news in the pollen count. Mountain cedar down now in the low category. Molds are also present, but they are low too. Yes, we'll talk all about that weekend forecast. Going to look a lot different from today. That's after the break. Welcome back. SA Live is at the top of the hour as the yep. countdown to Christmas mm -hmm. continues. How are you guys doing? 
Oh, fantastic. <laughs> yes, this is this is everything we've been training for. Indeed. <laughs> yes. So there it is. Scan that QR code on your screen because we want to see your Christmas photos and maybe share a favorite Christmas memory. Yes, indeed, because we've all got those great memories. And by the way, since this is Christmas, our guests are in the giving spirit. We have got not one, two, but three guests that have giveaways, and you're really going to want to stay tuned and figure out how you can maybe enter to win these things. Yeah. Okay, so. And lots of food too, so. Yes, and if your favorite Christmas memory is captured in a photo, well, that's great, we'd love to see that. <laughs> yes, indeed, so again, scan that QR code and we will see you in about 40 minutes. Thanks, guys. Awesome. A lot of memories on Christmas, which is so exciting for. Yeah, a great time of the year and um, hopefully you thin, you can thin out a little bit and look decent, because those are the pictures that my wife puts up all over the house. Oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember like always decorating gingerbread houses oh. with my cousins or baking cookies with my mom. Like that was always so much fun. We did that every year. That can get messy too, but it, it definitely can. It definitely can, <laughs> especially when all the cousins are together. It's like who can make the coolest gingerbread house? Or I guess the craziest <laughs> the at that craziest. point. Anyways, <laughs> so yes, let's talk about the weather because we've got a lot to cover as we wrap up the work week and get ready for the upcoming weekend. So we've got a front that's headed our direction. And of course, we know that it's muggy out ahead of the front. We had the fog this morning moving in and we are still monitoring some light rain that's pushing closer to the San Antonio area. Right now it's west of Bear County. So let's get you the latest look at your authority radar here, timing this out throughout the remainder of the day. You can see just a few light showers, maybe some sprinkles approaching the Comfort Kerrville area right along the I-10 corridor. That stretches farther off to the southwest near Medina as well as Bandera. Then we've got this batch of light to moderate rain still pushing across the Highway 90 corridor near Dehanis, Savinal pointing off to the north, even even farther off to the south there as well. Pearsall seeing a few isolated light showers head your direction. All of this gradually working its way farther off to the east, and that's going to be the theme into this afternoon and for some even lingering into this evening. This is the catalyst behind the activity. We've got an area of low pressure moving across the plains attached to it is that front rain all along that boundary up the I-35 corridor closer to the Metroplex there too. Watch what happens here on your future cast as we advance this in time into this afternoon by about two o'clock. I think some of that light rain is approaching the Alamo City, even stretches over closer to the Bandera and Hondo area. Then we start to see that front move in later on this evening by 6 p.m. It's already cleared a good chunk of the hill country. I think around dinner time, it's not out of the question that we're still dealing with a few isolated showers closer to San Antonio by about eight to nine o'clock, though that front's going to continue working eastbound and it's going to push all of that lingering rain along with it. Moving through our far eastern counties, notice through the overnight that's going to continue to work away from us. We see clearing skies take place and breezy conditions are going to develop by sunrise tomorrow. I think we could see some wind gusts upwards of about 25 to even 30 miles per hour to kickstart our Saturday as that cooler and drier air starts to work in. Unfortunately, not very impressive when it comes to additional rainfall totals with this particular round. For those that do tap into any shower activity later on today, I think generally a tenth of an inch, maybe two tenths of an inch are up for grabs, but that's about it. After that, rain chances pretty much disappear. This weekend, it's going to be dry, absolutely beautiful, and we're still looking at a pretty quiet forecast as we head into the beginning of next week as well. Now let's talk temperatures. You can see outside still very gloomy and gray. 61 degrees right now. Visibility has definitely improved compared to what we were looking at earlier this morning. 60 degrees to the current temperature in Bulverde at 61 out east in Converse, 62 in Hondo, 60 up in Bandera. Throughout the remainder of the afternoon, forecast high around 64 for us here in San Antonio. 59 degrees by 8 p.m. Thermometers falling into the 50s.
later on this evening. That takes us into this weekend. Take a look at that beautiful with that lower humidity moving back in as well. Chillier morning, so you are going to want the jacket tomorrow morning as we start off in the mid 40s. How about upper 30s briefly first thing Sunday? Plenty of sunshine though, helping temperatures rebound into the 60s both tomorrow and into Sunday there too. Upper 60s by early next week, then we'll monitor for a little bit more moisture to start working in by Wednesday and Thursday with maybe a few isolated rain chances, guys. Perfect as the kids go to holiday break. There you go. Thanks, Mia. The silver and black not giving up hope, and neither are fans, especially after their performance on Wednesday night. Why that game is fueling hopes for a potential win that can finally break the team's losing streak. Welcome back. The Spurs fought their way back from a 20-point deficit on Wednesday night. They outscored L.A. in the fourth quarter, 45-30, to but ultimately they lost to the Lakers 122-119. to Mary Rominger was at that game and explains why the loss is encouraging for some fans. The Spurs 3-20 record doesn't look good on paper, but in a night where odds were stacked against them, San Antonio showed grit where they haven't before in the fourth quarter. We took care of the ball at least a little bit, you know, like in the first half, and uh, we, we tried to, to step up the, intent, the intensity as well. I think we surprised them a couple times. The treat for basketball fans was born in the matchup between rookie Victor Wembanyama and superstar Anthony Davis. The two exchanged punches throughout the game, and Wembanyama never let up, scoring on and rejecting Davis on multiple occasions as Wemby walked away with 30 points, 13 boards, and six blocks. It's a great experience, you know. Um, some, some, he's somebody I've, I've studied uh, a little bit in the past and a uh, great player, of course. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm glad I'm going to be able to play so much more times against him. And that was Mary Rominger reporting. And it's a rematch tonight. The Spurs will host the Lakers at 6.30 this evening at the Frost Bank Center. And speaking of the Spurs, we're seeing a festive side to Wimby why he dressed up as Santa Claus and was joined by an elf with a familiar face. And we're learning more about an applesauce recall, why investigators think it was contaminated with lead on purpose.